Anonymous functions in Elixir are often referred to as lambdas or closures in other programming languages. They are functions that are defined without a name. They are frequently used for short one-off operations and can be passed around as arguments to other functions. Let's open up our terminal, command space terminal, and just start up a IEX shell. Anonymous functions are defined using the FN keyword. So the syntax is you do FN and then you have a parameter list and then, you know, dash greater than, and then you have your body and then the end of the function. And so that that is the simple layout of an anonymous function. And so let's go ahead and create a simple example of anonymous function that adds two numbers together. So we can do add equals, and then you just do FN, and then the, the parameters that you want to add together, in our case, we'll say A comma B. So it's taking two parameters and then do a dash greater than, and then the body of the function. What does it do? It needs to add A and B together. So we're going to say A plus B, and then just hit end. And so this is an anonymous function. If I hit enter, that function is now stored to our variable add. And you can call this function using the dot parentheses syntax. So we can do add dot, and then you, inside the parentheses, is where you need to pass your arguments. So we can do one comma two, and now this will add them together and it will return three for us. And just another example, we can do like increment equals FN, um, and this is going to take one argument, and all we're going to do is increment that one argument, so N plus one, and then hit end, and then to call this function, we do increment, we pass in, so you have to do the dot and then inside parentheses, and then we'll pass in five, we'll get six back. So it returns the number incremented by one. You can do things like just create a simple like greet function. So fn, take a name, and then we can return a string that says hello, comma, and then pass in our, our variable name, exclamation point, and then double quotations and then end this function. And then we can say, all right, greet dot inside of parentheses, Jacob. And now it says, hello, Jacob. Now you can even do conditional functions. So we can do something like check age. And so we can do FN age. And then inside of this, we can say, I can actually, I can hit enter here. We can do multiple lines. We can say if age is greater than or equal to 18, uh, we want to do, so we want to return adult for a string. And then we can say else return minor for a string. And then we can hit end to close off the if else block and then hit end to close off the anonymous function. And now if we say check underscore age and then dot and then inside our parentheses, we are going to pass in 19, we get that it's an adult back. Now you can also pass anonymous functions as an argument. And I think this is probably, probably one of the more powerful aspects of it. So for example, let's just create a list here called numbers. And I'm going to just say one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have our list. And then we can use enum.map, which will loop through our list. And then we can pass our list into our anonymous function. So if we did something like, let's just call this incremented and then we can do something like this equals and then enum.map. And we're gonna get more into all the enum functions, but just know it's looping through our list of numbers. And then we can pass in numbers here. And then the second argument, it actually is a function or it will take a function or anonymous function. And so if I just say increment, cause we already have our increment function up above, it's already stored to a variable, right, right here actually. So we're passing in this anonymous function and these numbers are going to be 
iterated through and we're going to increment one at a time and then it's going to return a list with them all incremented. So hit enter. And now we have our list of two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So they're all incremented, which I think is pretty cool. And then you can also uh, use pattern matching with anonymous functions. So we can do something like handle underscore response, set this equal to, and then we can just do FN and then, uh, now we can just pattern match and look for a response. So we can look for the atom okay, and then any data. And then we just return, we can return a string here called uh, data, oops, data received. And then we just can return that variable here. And then we can also say if there is an error, so we're looking for the error message and then the reason for the error. So now we can just return an error here. And so in this string, we can say error encountered and then return the, the reason inside our hashtag curly braces. All right, and then all we have to do is end this anonymous function. Oh, I spelled handle response wrong, but that's okay. It'll still work. And now when we call this, if we do handle response dot, and then inside our parentheses here, we need to pass in a tuple. And so if we said, okay, and then it, let's just say a string for data, this is data and then close off that curly brace. Now, when I hit enter, we're going to get data received. And then, uh, this is data. Pretty cool, right? And then we can also say, let's just change this okay. So it's pattern matching. And then so if we change this to error, the reason is going to be this is, we'll just change this to this is error. And now error encountered, this is error. So that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, Elixir's anonymous functions defined with the FN keyword are versatile tools for a wide range of tasks from basic arithmetic to complex operations involving conditionals and pattern matching. Their ability to encapsulate functionality without the need for a name coupled with the flexibility to be passed as arguments makes them an essential and powerful feature in the functional programming landscape of Elixir. We'll see you in the next video.